expected lung zones and V over Q ratios yesterday. Okay? We will start from where we left. These are the learning objectives. So we'll be looking a bit more closely at lung zones today. We look at V over Q, how it's how it is made, and we look at the clinical implications of what this all means in real life. Okay. Remember this very small, simple flow chart or flow of concepts or connection of concepts. So due to uneven distribution of blood and air throughout the lung, as you go from base to apex or however you want to go, as described yesterday, uh, this uneven distribution has implications. Uh, it has it has consequences for what? Eventually, for what the lung is most famous uh, in doing, uh, gas exchange. Okay. So you don't have, uh, as I yesterday explained, lung is not a homogeneous uh, thing, an organ when it comes to blood flow and air flow. Okay, it differs from area to area. These areas are called lung zones, which give rise to different V over Qs throughout the lung. And these various V over Qs lead to differences in gas exchange. So in one line, expect a bit different blood gas exchange wise or blood gases wise coming from the apex region, apical region of the lung as compared to the base region of the lung. I will let that settle down a bit. I have told you something very, very radical today. What I've told you is that when blood comes out, so let's say you put in a glass of blood inside the lung, theoretically. So from that glass, most of the blood would go to the base, base, basal areas, to the, towards the base. Some of it will stick to the level of where you threw the glass up. And little will go towards the apic, apical areas of the lung, effect of gravity. Similarly, the air also follows these three regions or zones. Now, when you collect that liquid with, that you threw in the glass of water or whatever, back to check what is happening to this fluid, you shouldn't be surprised that the fluid collected from the base of the lung is different, quite different from that collected from the apical regions of the lung. There are differences. Is, it, is there a difference in the liquid itself? No, it's the same liquid. It's the gas content, the oxygen content, the carbon dioxide content of this fluid coming from apex and coming from base. The difference is in blood gases. Any ideas why would there be differences in the blood gases, uh, gases in the fluid? The, the answer is pretty, it should be pretty obvious for the ones who were listening yesterday. There is a V over Q peculiarity in the apical regions and a different V over Q setting, V over Q setting in the base of the lung. That's why blood gases reflect where they are coming from. The blood as a signature. So the blood returning from the apical regions as a signature, where when you look at the blood gases, you can tell where is it coming from, okay? Theoretically speaking. Why do I say theoretically speaking? Because when blood is collected in the left atrium, it doesn't really matter where it came from. It just mixes, everything mixes when it hits the left atrium. These differences are theoretical in the sense that in the intact human being, this is a physiological observation that the pulmonary veins draining the upper areas of the lung 
would have a certain composition of blood, blood gases different from the pulmonary veins which are collecting blood from the basal regions of the lung okay when they combine and drain into the left atrium it's all the same way but of course this is exaggerated this becomes very important clinically when there is a problem in the lung that's when you want to dissect this whole concept out normally it it doesn't really matter why doesn't it matter in normal people and why it matters in certain disorders that we'll do today inshallah i deviate significantly now from the the way gaitan has presented concepts this is my own recipe okay i teach lung zones along with vq and along with blood gases because generally all of these are connected lung zones v over q and blood gases are connected concepts however they are given in two three places in gaitan so what i've done is i've taken them out and connected them connected them okay and you will be tested also not just in first year eventually in higher exams uh, they are more interested to know if you know what is the effect of all of this business on blood gases so it's it's reasonable to teach you right from the start uh, along those lines okay so we know that gravity affects blood flow we know that gravity affects air as well inside the lung we've done that yesterday uh, this is uh, an anatomical uh, bit here that when you go from apex to base in the upright posture the effect of gravity is such that blood flow and ventilation both decrease as you go against gravity something that i demonstrated yesterday however there are different postures you are not always standing okay so in the recumbent posture i e when a person is is lying flat but at an angle like patients in in the in the in the room in a hospital or in a ward that's called the recumbent position the flow is more in posterior than anterior because the guy is like this okay and if his supine is is lying flat then the whole thing equalizes because the effect of gravity averages out everything is the same when you lie horizontal so when the lungs are horizontal to the floor everything is 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 the same way okay so this is the the effect of posture uh, underlining the fact that the blood is is a, a the the pressure that blood exerts is a hydrostatic pressure okay from your understanding of physics you know what a hydrostatic pressure is hydrostatic pressure is by virtue of its weight weight okay now this is the main crux of the matter here right here and this is a diagram of gaitan okay so gaitan describes lung zones strictly on the basis of changes in blood flow and hence here i am telling you the same okay different books may present us different version of this again if you stray from gaitan look at some other books the whole thing zones vq blood gases is usually discussed in the same go the more clinically oriented physiology books okay however that is a basic textbook for undergraduates so it basically breaks it down into easy to understand components which is fine so here in this chapter he only discusses lung zones not the implications on vq and certainly not the implications on blood gases so what does he say well he says that blood zones strictly speaking are based on the differences of blood flow like we described yesterday no mention of ventilation as such okay so when we are talking about blood flow where does the blood come from in the lung the heart so it's natural to think about okay how does the heart pump blood into the lungs so you have to go to cardiac output very simply what he has demonstrated in this diagram here for the upper diagram the middle and the third i will come to the zones in a bit observe what's going on 
he has made an artery p ppc is uh, uh, capillary pressure so an average pressure which keeps the uh, capillary patent or open he is not gone into uh, details of this so if you are considering upper areas of the lung where there is difficulty for blood to go anywhere it may never be the case that blood pressure defeats alveolar pressure alveolar pressure said in another way alveolar pressure or ventilation pressure will always supersede blood pressure we did it yesterday this is old stuff in upper areas let me say it in that language in upper areas v is always higher than q that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying he does not introduce v over q in this section of the chapter that's why i am sticking to his language so blood flow is always less in the upper areas as compared to the air that the alveoli of this region are receiving so if you lock down to the alveolus model you just visualize an alveolus and the surrounding capillary that is bringing blood to it you should always imagine this scenario this scenario right here the top so big bulky alveolus pressing down on the low pressure alveolar vessel this is why we showed you this diagram so in this area which is the top most area of the lung the artery the the vessel that surrounds the alveolus is always under pressure so low flow more air remember this please more air less blood it has implications number 2 what about areas which are at the level of the heart what would happen there well when the when the heart goes into systole the alveolar vessel would open up properly and beat or defeat the alveolar pressure so this is where the alveolar pressure and alveolar capillary pressure equates it's the same during cardiac systole when the push comes and it's at the level of the heart so all the vessels alveolar vessels would nicely open up and bathe in the alveolar air gases okay what and what happens during diastole diastole is where when the heart relaxes when the heart relaxes the the push drops and hence the capillary sort of gives in to the alveolar push alveolar pressure this happens in the middle zones which he says is lung zone 2 in lung zone 3 i have skipped saying lung zone 1 there's a reason for it we'll come back to it lung zone 3 is where the basal areas of the lung are yes and in here we know that gravity really comes to to the rescue of blood more than it comes to the rescue of air because of the weight so in here it does not matter if the heart the heart is in systole or diastole blood flow is always more than alveolar pressure so blood pressure in the alveoli will always be more than alveolar air pressure at all times irrespective of cardiac cycle what's happening over there is irrelevant so i'm quickly recapping from base to apex in basal areas lower areas of the lung during the entire cardiac cycle basically the pressure inside the alveolar vessels is more than alveolar uh, air pressure ventilation in the middle areas it depends during systole the vessel pressure is more and it equates with the alveolar pressure however in diastole the pressure within the vessel drops and the alveolar pressure compresses it in higher areas it's the reverse 
the blood pressure never beats the alveolar pressure ventilation is always higher than perfusion okay any questions i have described to you lung zones now that's it i will now go higher and more complicated how what are its implications and then eventually what are the clinical implications so if you have a question fire away now or hold your peace ji coming to that i'll come i'll come to that any other questions okay so first question was uh, why did i skip zone 1 i'll answer it straight away and number 2 the the bit about exercise which i will answer now okay so assuming that you are with this program you have understood what are the differences in blood flow i e perfusion and alveolar pressure i e ventilation in higher middle and basal lung areas assuming that you have some understanding of this when gaitan says lung zone 1 what he means is an abnormal patch an abnormal patch of lung tissue in the highest area of the lungs which almost does not receive blood flow it only receives air it's very high up and this is abnormal please make a very strong mental note of this lung zone 1 of gaitan does not exist in normal human beings of course there are there are profile of copd i'm i'm saying copd so that you can have a mental tag to your memory that lung zone 1 does not exist in normal human beings there cannot be a situation where an alveolus anywhere in the lung irrespective of gravity or space or whatever that it does not receive any blood at all and it only receives air this is no no not allowed and it doesn't have and it shouldn't have that's why i skipped saying lung zone 1 because it needs a separate explanation are we okay with that coming to the, to the, the second point in a normal human being at rest like yourself there is only two lung zones should be only two lung zones in the lung lung zone 2 and lung zone 3 these can be nice little mcqs normal resting human being upright two and three lung zones that's it one should never in any posture lung can one can not exist should not exist once you exercise you start exercising the lung becomes lung zone three how well ideas because the pumping of the heart has increased not just increased in individual contraction but the number of contraction has also increased so that means more blood is being pushed into the lung at unit time as compared to rest so what does that mean that means that it does not matter where you are in the lung it will get continuous blood flow throughout the cardiac cycle what is that zone zone 3 so in exercise the entire lung becomes zone 3 of a good healthy individual okay optimized optimized for maximum gas exchange of more blood as much as this guy can do exercise of okay now here i introduce v over q and blood gas so i mentioned yesterday that as you go from base to apex or however you do it there is a increase in q and there is an increase in ventilation i i said it yesterday but how much we said that the if you go from bo uh, bottom to up the drop in q is much more 
then the drop in ventilation. And we discussed a bit of physics of that, uh, the whole thing, okay? So there is a five-fold drop in perfusion, blood flow, as you go from base to apex. There is only a two-fold drop in ventilation. Both drop. However, there is a, uh, it, it, they, the drop is not symmetrical because of one is a liquid, complex liquid actually, and the other is, is, is a gas, okay, is there. So if you want to calculate V over Q for base areas, you areas, not base as in one, base also can be many areas. Imagine the whole lung and the dip as well, the, the corner of the lung. All those areas on an average should come out to be 0.6 V over Q. Remember Q is more, V is less compared, compared to each other in the basal regions. And as you go up, V over Q starts to rise up because V is increasing or V is not increasing. V is decreasing lesser than Q. Q is really plummeting, dropping like anything. So the ratio starts to increase. But this point here can cause confusion when you are on your own study. That things are decreasing, both are decreasing as you go from base to apex, then why does V over Q increase as a ratio as you go from base to apex? It's mathematics. So I just wanted to say it just one more time that V over Q is lowest in the lower areas of the uh, lung, highest as you go up. Please remember that. This is a nice diagram to show you. This is, we start the graph at the base. We go to the apex, perfusion drops. Ventilation also drops, but look at the difference. Perfusion really drops as compared to ventilation. And when you calculate the V over Q, it rises. It is a graphical representation of what I just said. Now comes the question. Now that you understand hydrostatic pressure creates zones in the lung. Now that you understand that exactly how do V over Q differs between the top areas and the bottom areas and the middle areas, in the middle it should be around, I said base and apex. What, is, what about the middle? What would the V over Q be in the middle? Near to one, almost equal. Okay, as you go down, it should drop. As you go up, it should increase. For you to think about the following question. If blood is returning from the apical areas of the lung and compared to blood returning from the basal areas of the lung, could you comment or think about what would be the difference of the oxygen content of these two bloods? And then later on, once you have figured that out, think about the difference in carbon dioxide of these two bloods. It, it really encompasses everything and a bit more. It stretches your imagination. So think, think about lung zones, think about the pressures, think about V over Q. So what is happening? In the higher areas, it's less blood, more air. Yes? yes. In the base areas, there is more blood, less gas. The blood that comes out of the apical areas, however less it may be, will be high in oxygen. As compared to the lots of blood that you get from the base of the lung. What about carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide content of the blood that is coming from the apex should be lesser than carbon dioxide content of the base of the lung. And I will just say it in one sentence which should clarify anything which is left. It's, it's if you can just think of a warehouse, of a warehouse, in this warehouse, there are people who are handing out packets, okay? Number of packets given out is the output of this warehouse. 
so a warehouse one is handing over packets whatever to less number of people so if you are at warehouse one you have more chance of getting a packet or maybe more packets because there are just fewer people and lots of boxes as compared to warehouse two where there are a lot of people and this and lesser boxes so converting it into long terms very less blood lots of air so it has all the time to soak up more oxygen and give out more carbon dioxide because this the air is just too much and the flow is just too less while in the in the lower areas there is rush like in a mall near eid okay too many people too much blood and this blood not all the blood has time to equilibrate with the alveolar air so it cannot soak up oxygen properly and hence it can't give out its carbon dioxide properly either hence this blood quality wise blood gas wise is average while the top region blood is it's literally too good okay both are not good the middle part is the best where v over q is equal so whatever blood is coming it's getting a nice treatment of oxygen and proper removal of carbon dioxide yes in normal individual these uh, changes in the apical and base regions average out nicely there is not a huge conundrum in blood gases you get 95 mmhg in arterial blood po2 and 40 mmhg carbon dioxide in arterial blood this is your average blood gases with slight variation in a normal human being and everything is fine okay. now now let's come to the clinical bit here this is the clinical bit mycobacterium tuberculosis what is this this is the organism which causes tuberculosis tb okay guess where it thrives apex why what is in the apex which it really 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 likes high oxygen content air with high oxygen this is where it thrives less flow so that it cannot be swept away but very high oxygen so in a tb patient on an x ray always start looking if you are suspecting tb start looking from upper areas and most probably you will find a problem uh, an area of tuberculosis in the apical regions of this lung this is now we are going towards its practical implications so b over q does not it's it's just a ratio it can be off throwing it can be seriously off throwing if you are only looking at the ratio so the point here is the message here is v over q should be read along with the rest of the patient's data always go for history always go for physical examination always go for looking at the uh, uh, x ray ct or mri then look at along with this whole picture then look at the bq because if you only look at the bq it can be misleading like what happens in low bar pneumonia in low bar pneumonia is basically messing up of lung tissue okay it's it's not properly doing its function okay it's not receiving air it's just messed up an area a dysfunctional area of the lung which is not being aerated it knows it's not receiving air because there is either fluid filled here or some other destruction has happened okay we will look at it at the end of of this series what pneumonia is so sometimes pneumonia is not thankfully it's not in the entire lung or even in one whole lung it's localized in one lobe of the lung here you would have a patch of pneumonia for example which will not be receiving air it will become this area will become hypoxic yes now initially calculate the v over q v would be down as compared to q q will be up so you will have decreased v over q 
would you have decreased over v, uh, v over q or not? Because ventilation has gone down v, as compared to q. However, something will happen in, in a day or two to the blood flow to this area. I taught it yesterday. G. G. Yes. Remember, lung pulmonary vasculature has an exception. It has three, four exceptions we spoke about yesterday. One very important exception is when it faces hypoxia, it vasoconstricts. Systemic circulation vasodilates when it faces hypoxia, not pulmonary circulation. In pulmonary circulation, whenever wherever there is a patch of hypoxia, the vessels in that region go into vasoconstriction. Why? We said why yesterday. What's the point of giving blood over here when there is no air? So it's actually a protective mechanism to divert blood to more fruitful areas. Yes? But check out what happens in lobar pneumonia then. You have dropping, you have dropped V and eventually you have dropped Q as well, resulting in a normal V over Q. And what horror is there that it's not at all normal. Both are actually decreased, but they are equally decreased. See how V over Q can be misleading when taken out of context. So it's a concept we take. It's not a physical thing. You just make it up. You look at the ventilation, you look at the blood flow, which are physical events, but V over Q in itself is just a mathematical expression of two physical events. This is where the special recipe becomes or more special. Okay. I want to introduce to you what really in real life happens and can happen to a lung from the point of view of V over Q. V over Q here and V over Q here. So the lowest V over Q, lower V over Q, very low V over Q, normal or equal V over Q, higher, more higher, quite high, uncomfortably high, infinity. This whole thing. This is actually what happens. Garten doesn't describe it. And when he describes the lower and highest end of VQ abnormality, people get confused. Where did this come from? Well, it came from this whole timeline. It came from these grades of V over Q from the lowest dump to the highest V over Q possible. Let's put this scale on the lung. Upright individual, base of the lung, apex of the lung. We are putting the scale right here. Let's make a scale. In the lower areas, V over Q is less or more? Less. So you would say base of the lung is low VQ areas. Can you say that? Now we travel up. We come to the middle-ish portions. We say it equals. V over Q is equal here. Now we go from the middle areas to the higher areas and it starts to increase or decrease? Increase. increase. So we say that we have come from the lower VQ to the normal VQ. Now it's increasing. So we say higher VQ areas. Yes? If you've understood that, you will really like this diagram. Let's start from the base. This is the base. So lower VQ areas, the lowest part of the low VQ areas is called a shunt, where the whole thing becomes literally zero. It shouldn't happen, or it happens very slightly, maybe, probably. Okay, so low, lo lower areas of the lung are here somewhere. They should be they should be labeled as 
low VQ areas. Then you should have high VQ areas. And there are high VQ areas. We know this now. But what is the highest point, the abnormal highest point of high VQ areas? We call it, we have a name for it, dead space. The perceptive student will immediately label it as lung zone uno, one. Lung zone one is also called physiological dead space. The studious student would link it with the anatomical dead space now. When we mentioned that anatomical dead space is constant 150 ml. However, anything more than 150 ml in a, in a person, that bit is physiological dead space. Now you know what physiological dead space actually is. It's an area of zone one situation, <clears throat> situation where you only have air, you have no blood. Hence, V over Q approaches infinity. And it should not happen in a normal human being. However, what Guyton does not, it skips this whole thing in between, is that it's okay to have high VQ areas because this is nature. This is the effect of gravity. As you go up the lung, you will have a distortion of V over Q and these areas will have higher VQ areas. However, it should not approach infinity. I've said it now. And the basal areas are, it's okay to have lower VQ areas, but it should not approach zero. When it does, we have a name for it. So now you know what's the continuum of V over Q. You have high VQ, lower VQ, and the middle areas. And then you have the abnormal stuff on this end called dead space, physiological dead space. And at this end, it's called physiological shunt. So shunted blood is poorly oxygenated. Blood coming out of low VQ areas are poorly oxygenated, high in carbon dioxide, bad blood, right? Blood coming out of higher VQ areas more than usual oxygen, more than usual drop in carbon dioxide. What's the middle? The middle is you should have 104 oxygen, 104 mmAg oxygen and 40 mmAg carbon dioxide. This is what is the ideal. Why? Because alveolar O2 is 104. And when blood comes, we will study this in next chapter. When blood comes, there is equilibration between alveolar air and the blood oxygen. 104, immediately this becomes 104. And that's the optimum. However, in higher VQ areas, it becomes more than 104. And so on and so forth. 